Today we're gonna be upgrading from this loud, fast lift pump to an air dog. Maybe they have it wired like this on purpose just to send extra fuel to the pump. I, I don't know, because it's a CP4. Anyone else do that? I don't know. That's, that's the first. I've seen it. You better pay attention, Devin, behind the camera, because you're going to be getting an air dog, I think, right? Yeah. All right. All right, so in the box, we have the wiring harness right here. All loomed up, looking nice. Put it aside. We have some HOEs. We got some hoses right here. And then the hardware bag. All the fittings. Zip ties and the bracket. We're gonna mount it on the inner side of the frame so that way you can't really see it. Here is the Air Dog 4G. Air Dog 2 4G unit, 165. They've upgraded the filter. Water separator. It used to be a small little knob. Know. Here's the thing you have one. My fast in which, I think this is like one of the original ones. Loud. And mine has a water separator. Yeah. And then the reason why we're gonna mount it on the inner side of the frame, which I don't even know if I can because I have this plastic piece. We'll figure out a way. I think I mounted mine like up there last time. Yeah, the reason why you want to do that is obviously you can see this filter is all corroded and nasty because the tire kicks dirt, salt, makes it corrode and destroys it a lot quicker than if it's on the inner side of the frame. I mean, you can kind of see, I think. Right here. Oh no, I'll do the bottom one right here. Bottom one? Yeah. Two more. Do the bottom one first. Bottom one first. Yeah, so we can see the hole at the top. Whew. One more. All right, so supposedly this is the hardest part on a on an air dog install. Just drilling the holes for the bracket, in which I'll show you guys the differences between an air dog mounting position and a fast lift pump mounting position once we're done here. What's better than one lift pump? Two lift pump. Just kidding. We are about to remove the fast pump right there. The only thing that we're kind of struggling with at the moment is that the way the fast lift pump works and the air dog works is a little different. Fast has their own straw at the top that is required to be mounted. Yep, so that pink red thing right there is the fast draw straw in which the air dog doesn't use that. The air dog uses a factory sending unit. But in order to remove that piece, what we gotta do, Devin? What we gotta do? To remove what? The straw? Yeah, we gotta remove the, to remove the straw, I gotta plug the hole back up. Yeah, you have to drop your tank down, take the uh, cap off, silicone, silicone the hole in, so you know, no water or any debris right. get in your fuel. Put that back up, and then they want you to use the factory lines, and you, well, I mean, your factory lines are, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it might not be the best idea. Yeah, I mean, send, not, send, send that to your engine. Yeah, we're not we're not doing that. <laughs> so take your uh, so then you need to go to dealership and buy two new factory fuel lines and yep. uh, yeah, I think until then we're gonna try to use the the fast draw straw. We'll do that for. I would recommend that. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. Instead of messing with all those damn screws, I could have just unbolted the bed frame thing. And the mm -hmm. whole. Why didn't you tell me? Yeah, it is. Boy. I thought you were going to maybe keep the damn. The bracket on here? Bracket. I thought I was just going to keep the damn bracket on here. 
I can't read your damn mind, boy. I told you that the damn thing mounted to the... Well, yeah, now, now I realize what you meant. <laughs> Thought you just didn't want to do it that way. I'm oh, sorry, I'll be more clear next time. I tried an 18 first range and all that. I think it's going to be an 18. Pretty big. Uh, you ain't going to be able to get that. You're going to have to get that uh, big one. Go to the fourth drawer, give me that rubber mallet. Should be a black. There you Ooh, go. Craftsman? Yep. Cheaped out on the hammer there, huh? Mr. Snap on doesn't have to snap. My fast lift pump apparently is one of them oversized ones, not a 165, which it's just tuned in to lead it, so I don't know why anybody would need something bigger than a 165. So that might explain the noise, and also that might explain why it stays on after I cut the truck off, unless they just wired it like that on purpose. But I'll have to look up the serial number later to see what model this actually is, but I do see that it was made in 2016, so it's definitely old time to upgrade anyway. All them muscles. Dude, I barely even touched it. All them muscles you got. Told you to stop working out. I actually did go to the gym yesterday. <laughs> so we broke this. I broke it. I'm about to say, don't be saying what? <laughs> yeah, I broke it. <laughs> and I honestly, it just kept twisting out, and I wasn't even applying that much pressure. This sucks. I mean, in the instructions, it says not to over torque it. And I was being very careful. And next thing I know, it's, it just snapped, right? You know what happened? You saw it. Yeah, you know what happened? What? Putting it on the first time, got it tight. Taking it back out, and now. Weakened it? Couldn't, yeah, weakened it. Weakened it. Ah, that sucks. Well, on the bright side, I have a couple of air dogs in stock at the house that I'm selling. So now I'm $700 out of pocket, but it is what it is. Maybe they'll warranty it, I don't know. All right, let's go home, get another one. So Devin actually got this broken piece out of it with what, a star bit? Yeah. Put a star bit just big enough and then start turning left. That, that's why I keep him around, honestly. <laughs> like, I knew he would come in handy. Some point. Some point, and then it's finally paid off. <laughs> All right, we gotta be careful now, okay? You know what size that was? Uh, not a 14, it's bigger than that. 16. We're stopping there. No, it's we're tight. Stopping. All right, we're stopping there. Don't go, don't go any further. Hey, we can always tighten it if it leaks. If it leaks, that's right. If it leaks. So. It's not going to. I put a good ugly nugget on it. Yeah. So. Devin saved my butt from having to use another unit. Um, I did use the fitting from another unit. All right, so now I'm just replacing this fast wiring with our air dog. So I just started cutting the wires or cutting the zip ties that was holding this wire harness in, tracing it back, and then now we're running the new line to the engine bay. While I'm doing that, Devin's got everything lined up for us. Everything yep. wired up. All the hoses are connected. We need to zip tie some of them hoses just to do, do some last minute final zip, touch up. I zip tied them all on top already. Oh, you did? Yeah. So the only hose I ain't zip tied is this all one. Right. 
I, I knew I was keeping them around for, for a reason. <laughs> but if you guys are watching this, Truckmaster does have a really good step-by-step -step how to install video on the air dog unit. I would highly recommend it because I really didn't do a whole lot of step-by-step -step on, on this episode. So check out Truckmaster. Go watch his step-by-step -step if you want to learn how to install this unit. And mainly because the way we're doing it is going to be a little bit different because we are reusing the FAS system. So I guess in case some of you guys might be reusing the say, FAS. I would, I would definitely do it because there's probably yeah. not one out there. All right. So if we look, where's that sending unit? All right. So the draw straw. All right. So that draw straw has two lines. One is going to be your return line, and the other one is going to be your fuel line, your supply line. So traditionally, you would cut right here and put this in there like this, and then have a line routed to the air dog. But because our draw straw has a return line to it, instead of removing it and messing with all of that, we figured let's just reuse it because it should work. And if it doesn't, I'd be the first to let you guys know that it doesn't work, but it should work. So we left it there. So that line coming out, one is the return and one is the supply. And then after that, everything is pretty much the same as how, how you would normally route your air dog. Yeah, and everything after that is about the same. So everything here is done. Yeah, all you gotta done. do is wire. Shoot, let's do it. Our buddy Truckmaster recommends that you tap into 45, which is auxiliary HVAC ignition. But mine is currently not on that for the fast wiring. Let's figure out where that is. Yeah, it was right here. Which was, a, you said fuel heater? Yeah. Number six, fuel heater. Why it was in that one? I don't know. Number four, looks like 45, there is auxiliary HVAC ignition. Yeah, so it's literally just ignition whenever it's in ignition it cuts yeah. on, but so you need to put that you need to put a 15 amp fuse back. Here we go, been down this road. They already know when we go on tour, I'll take you anywhere you wanna go. People talk about us like they understand just what this is. I just wanna give you Bucket's not even gonna fit under there, dog. It's gonna be alright. Alright, go ahead. Oh shit. Oh, I think she could now. You oh, like that fast? Yeah, it came out immediately. There ain't no way that's filled. Huh? There ain't no way that's filled. Run it again? Let's put it in one position. Alright, so this is what the air dog sounds like in row position. That's it. That's all you hear. Yeah, that's a lot quieter than the fast I had. <laughs> yeah. In which I don't know if it's because it's one of the bigger fast pumps and we wired it to the, in my opinion, the correct spot. Because if you uh, take it off front position, if you can reach there, stops immediately. Immediately, instead of running for like another minute. So yeah, it's way quieter, and I'm stoked about it. And Devin, as always, thanks for your help, buddy. No problem, buddy. At the FSU uh, facility. <laughs> no Honestly, if we had to do it again, I think we can get it knocked out in like an hour. Oh yeah, easy.
It's just that we had to figure out if the fast system that we have would work. I gotta see if the air dog system has, is the same way. You know one thing I'd like to know also? What? What if we were to, like mine's ran correctly, my right. electrical part. Yeah. What if we were to cut the wires? Oh, we could. And just splice in the connector part, plug it in. I don't see why it wouldn't work. I don't see why it wouldn't either. But All then, it needs is power, it's got the power. Yeah. I would still just run the air dog harness though, just because. But honestly, if your fast works fine, you don't you don't have to swap over. Yeah. No, nah, it's gonna. I'm gonna wait till it goes you're gonna, out. You're gonna wait till it goes out. Yeah. And you have an LML. Did you have an? Did you put the fast before you did the CP3 conversion? I did it the same two days after I deleted it. And you had the CP3 on it for. You had the CP4 Four, on it for yeah. a while. Yeah, for thirty-two thousand miles. Okay. So. You guys just heard Devin say that he put the fast lift pump two days after you deleted it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, with these LMLs, it's highly recommended that you put a lift pump, even if you don't, even if it's not tuned and deleted. Now, just listen to that. You really don't hear anything. Trucks in run position. I don't hear my lift pump at all obviously the glow plug light came back on until i fixed the glow plug or replaced the glow plug but right now we are at a quarter of a tank and right now this is when the fast pump would be really really loud and it would surge and yeah but the air dog hasn't been doing it so far but this will be the real test if it leaves me stranded or not because i'm using the fast draw straw that's one of the reasons why a lot of people use a sump kit on the fast because of the quarter tank issue. I'm going to be driving 50 more miles like this before I fuel it up. So I'll keep you guys updated and see if I have any issues. I'm, I'm assuming it won't, but if it does, I will keep you guys updated. All right, we're at a quarter of a tank and the fuel prices have dropped a lot here. So I think it's a really good time to fuel up before the prices go back up in my opinion. So let's go over here to the pump. The truck's doing pretty good with a quarter of a tank. I was scared that maybe we might run into that quarter of a tank issue on the fast draw straw. But I think it really comes down to whoever installs the draw straw, how they do it. That's not good. All right, as you guys just saw, we do have a leak. You can see it dripping right there. Now, originally, uh, it's been doing this for the last two days, and my initial um, detective work said uh, I did have I put my old fast pump in the back of my truck, in which it fell, and when it fell, it it poured fuel all the way to the front and all the way to the back. Now, I really don't see any leaks back here, but what I was thinking was that the way the truck was parked, it was parked forward. So all that fuel that leaked, you can see it, the trail going forward and possibly landing on the fuel tank and then on top of the fuel tank. And then from the top of the fuel tank, it was just slowly leaking over to the air dog. And that's why it was covering the unit with fuel. Now, that could still be it, but it's been doing that for the last two days. And I don't think there was that much fuel on the fast lift pump because some of it did get poured out. Let's go ahead and wipe that off because I don't want fuel everywhere. That could possibly be it, but I, I think the air dog itself is leaking too. Uh, we didn't tighten something up, obviously. So let's go ahead and troubleshoot and figure out why it's leaking. But for the last couple days, as you guys saw, I had a quarter of a tank. And from that quarter of a tank, I was driving around a good bit. Letting it sit overnight, I really didn't notice any type of fuel drainage. So I, I really don't know if the air dog is leaking or it's leaking so little that it really doesn't make a lot of difference. So we're about to figure out. I feel like it's from the filter. Oh yeah, I think it is. 
Oh yeah, it's dripping from the filter. Oh yeah. The filter just wasn't tight. I feel so dumb. <laughs> oh my god. You live and learn. I just feel so dumb. We had that much fuel. We I've probably lost 10 bucks worth of fuel just because my filter wasn't tight. I was about to put this truck on the lift and inspect the bottom of it. But I'm sure you guys can understand why I was afraid to tighten it up a little too much because I snapped that fitting earlier in this video. So yeah, so nothing's wrong with the AirDog. Everything is wrong with me. If you still want to support me, we sell AirDog on our website. Just make sure to tighten up the filter. All right, well, that was an easy fix and a huge relief. I thought it was gonna be something bigger, but that is it for this video. Uh, you can convert from fast to an air dog with a draw straw. And uh, for an LML, it is crucial to have a lift pump, mainly because, well, really any Duramaxes prior to L5Ps didn't come with a built-in lift pump. If you were pushing higher horsepower, if your truck is tuned, it's gonna demand more fuel, in which the lift pump is gonna help provide that uh, delivery. However, LMLs especially I recommend because LMLs uh, have a CP4 pump in which they're not an issue over in Europe because they use different fuel, their fuel is a little bit dirtier, creates more lubricity. In America, it, it's, it's a cleaner fuel here in America and it also has sulfur in it. That contributes to the CP4 pump in America getting dried out, eventually it starts sending metal shavings through your fuel system and it'll blow up your truck. That right there is roughly about $10,000 in repair because you gotta do the pump, injectors, lines, and everything. So that is not something you wanna go through. And so having a lift pump does help prevent it. It doesn't 100% prevent it, pr prevent it, I'm gonna be honest with you, but it does help. And it's not like every CP4 is gonna blow up either, but, there's a lot more CP4 pumps blown up than there should be. Uh, I personally know about five trucks with blown up CP4s, so that's five more than I want to I want to know. And I've also seen stock LMLs not tuned, not deleted, nothing just blow up because it had bad fuel. Um, I think it had a little bit of water in the fuel from the, the from the gas station. So that's why I always do CP3 conversion on my trucks, just because I feel like with my luck. I will blow up a CP4. But in the meantime, I I have a lift pump just for a little peace of mind. And I also use Hotshot Secrets EDT every time I fill up the truck so that way it keeps the lubricity up. So with that being said, I think a lift pump is one of the most crucial modifications to your LML. And honestly, with any other Duramaxes that are tuned and deleted or even just tuned, pushing more fuel because you wanna supply that fuel to your pump quicker. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If it was helpful to you, make sure to hit the like button. And if you like Duramax content, hit the subscribe button. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.